the sequence where we we are first transported onto the yacht and you see the various tiers of class system introduced yeah. i think are brilliant and the fact that there are even tiers within uh the the domestic stuff within the ship's yes. crew you know from yes. the captain all the way down to mm -hmm. poor abigail dolly de leon's character who is like you know she, she's the head of the cleaning staff Hello and welcome to Deep Dives with my friend Steve Hackman and myself, James Marsh. This episode, we are talking Ruben Ostland's Triangle of Sadness. Hey, but you know the drill. If you haven't already subscribed, it'd be a great favor to us if you went ahead and hit that subscribe button. While you're there, ding the little bell. And that way you're notified every time we upload a new video. And just as a reminder, Deep Dives does contain spoilers, so you've been warned. James, let's talk the Triangle of Sadness. So yes, this is the essentially the story of a sort of celebrity influencer couple of models, male model, female model, uh, who are given a or invited aboard a sort of cruise for the super rich. Uh, so it's the film is divided up into three acts. We meet them and see what their fairly fractious relationship is like. Then the middle part of the film is on the cruise, and then the final act is after they have been uh, shipwrecked on a desert island. Um, this film is from Rupert Ostland, previously directed uh, Force Majeure and The Square. The Square won the Palm Door at Cannes and Triangle of Sadness, his follow-up, also won the Palm Door at Cannes. So that is um, pretty pretty high praise, pretty big plaudits. Uh, Steve, what do you think of Triangle of Sadness? Let me just start by saying that I think Ruben Ostland just gave us the best projectile vomiting since The Exorcist. I, 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 was that a little over the top or what did you think about that? I was wondering how long it was going to take us until we just started talking about that scene. Honestly, I absolutely love that. Love that scene. Yeah. I'm a pretty yeah. sort of lowbrow scatological guy when it comes down yeah. to it. You know, it, that made me laugh and laugh and laugh. I was in tears. I was, I watched this at the uh, Busan International Film Festival in uh, oh, Korea right. last October. It was the first mm -hmm. film I actually saw at the festival, if I remember rightly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I was all enthusiastic in, in the mood to see something fairly sort of arty and highbrow. And then yeah. that comes on and I was just rolling in the aisles. I, I was in absolute hysterics and it just went, goes yeah. on and on and on. It's one of those jokes where it gets funny, then it gets tired then it gets an irritating and then it gets funny again just because it keeps coming keeps coming i i, I thought that was hilarious yeah it's one of those uh, tropes where the timing is everything because you you push it past when you've gone too long and then it it reaches like a a whole new you you've broken through again and now we're we're having fun with it i have to say is it was a little too much for my wife i think she kind of got up and left for a little while well she's a classy and, lady you know she is a classy not, way so. and 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 so i had to kind of feign being offended by it all but but uh, <laughs> but i wasn't that much um, I can just I can yeah. just imagine this playing at like the Palais at the Cannes Film Festival where they're like, oh, you know, you know, it's Ruben Osland. He won the Palm Door for the Square, which is this you know, very funny sort of satire on the art world. And mm -hmm. he, he's like, here's my new movie. And it's just people puking on each other, puking on themselves, puking down the halls, people slipping in the puke on the stairs and in the mm -hmm. in the alley for like, what, 15, 20 minutes, something like that. Oh, yeah. It just goes so over the top. And it's it's so much fun. And you know that the people that are watching this at Cannes, this is the very type of people that yeah, it's absolutely. targeting. You know, this is where the this is like bullseye. This and and so yeah, it, in that aspect, it was a lot of fun. And at the end, my overall summation of this film is I enjoyed sections of it more than I enjoyed the whole. There, there are sections of this film I really, really enjoyed. But as a whole, there was a few too many shortcomings and weaknesses. Obviously, this has been nominated for a Best Picture Oscar. And so the expectation of this high level, I think that there's films that should have been in that top 10 sure. Oscar nomination instead of Triangle of Sadness, as much as I enjoyed this film. Yeah, no, I, I'm right there with you. I think it is less than the sum of its parts. I think there are sections in it which are which are great. You know, mm -hmm. the the vomiting is right up there. You know, but but I and I think like a lot of the early scenes between Carl and Yaya, the two the two the model yes. couple, 
are very, very well observed conversations between a couple where there is a huge disparity of of income earning uh, yeah. between the two of them. There's a dinner scene at a restaurant, a very classy restaurant that she picked. Um, and then she expects him to pay for. And we, it's established very quickly that she is the more successful model than he is. Yes. And yet she expects him to pay for her. And he, you know, fair play to him, stands his ground and says, you know, are we we're, are we splitting it or why are you expecting him to pay? And they get into like a little, uh, uh, yeah. a very passive aggressive conversation about it, mm. um, which I thought was beautifully well observed. I've been in situations like that, but, you know, and there is, it's a very difficult conversation to have if you're on the kind of receiving end of it, you know, because there right. is, you know, because it plays into that whole idea of where well, you're the man and, right. and and that's and that's where it stops. You know, it doesn't yeah. matter who's earning the money. You're the man. You should treat me as the woman. And, you know, in this day and age and particularly in a situation where the woman is, is earning far more than the man, uh, you, you have, I think, a, a good a good position to push back yeah. against yeah, no, that. No, no. And this is what Uslan does so well. He subverts our expectations and our societal norms. And, you know, he's just taking a pot shot at this very idea that, you know, if you ask this model on the side, whether she believes in equality and everybody should split it equally, she, she would give you the standard 21st century 2023 answer. But we mm -hmm. are so embedded. I, and I think this is what Uslan is trying to communicate. We are so embedded. A narrative has been so printed on us that we don't even know that it's happening and when we're sitting at the table she's offended she doesn't even realize that she is communicating a narrative she doesn't even understand it's exuding out of her dna our 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 whole societal dna says the man pays for it the man is the alpha the man is the head of the home the man is the covering all of these things as much as we try to say that that's not the case and i, I believe i mean I think you and I would would say we're we're on the equality belief, mm -hmm. and yet there are these societal expectations that I think even in 2023, and this is what this film is highlighting in this scene, they're still very much with us and and need to be overcome. Oh sure, but I I would I wouldn't um uh step step off off her quite so, quite so much. I mean she knows exactly what she's doing. She's a young beautiful woman uh, operating in a community and a society in a bubble of incredibly wealthy men who many mm -hmm. of whom are more than happy to pay their way to pay for everything to throw money at her and she knows that and she's exploiting that situation mm -hmm. and it's it's almost like um that's the habit that she's gotten into and now that she now she's actually having to break that habit because yeah. she is in a relationship with a guy who can't do that or or, right. or won't or won't do that no, no point well taken. You're right. She is, lives in an environment. And it started me thinking about you hear read these articles at uh, Oscar times of the gift bags they get at the Oscars. You know, oh, celebrities crazy. are so used to people buying them things. I, I still remember in Chuck Norris's memoir one time when he gets pulled over by a cop for speeding and this the cop realizes it's Chuck Norris and he lets him go because he's Chuck Norris. And he says, you know, <laughs> when nobody knew who I was, that's when I couldn't afford it. Now that a speeding ticket means nothing to me. I get it for free. And, yeah. and it just, that's it, that, that little anecdote just came to my mind because there is with celebrity. And in this woman's case, this expectation that the world owes me, people around me are going to take care of me. Well, or just, or just that as, as a young woman, um, in one of those situations, you, you just know that you can manipulate it to your advantage. And that you can essentially coast along and get everything for free just by showing up and looking good. Do you think she's intentionally doing that? Or do you think it is, I, it's, it's a yeah. reflexive action that is, because it seems, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't say she is doing this with intention. I think when she is offended, I think she's genuinely offended. I don't think she's thinking about how am I going to manipulate this situation? I think it's a reflexive action that is almost like breathing. You don't think about breathing. You just do it because it's part of your reflexive action. I think she's so submerged in this kind of environment that she's doing it unconsciously. I, and that's why I she's think, offended. I think it's a habit she has gotten into mm -hmm. and a way of life to which she has become accustomed. You know, in in the, in the society in which she yeah. operates, you know, she's a model. She's an experienced model. She's a successful model. So she's, you know, she is uh, has been in and around uh, an environment of incredibly wealthy men out to impress for a long time. 
Um, and I think it's just a bad habit that she's realizing that she's got yeah. to actually break now because yeah. she's in what feels like a new yet serious relationship with a working guy. You know, he's in mm -hmm. the same industry, but he's a working guy. Mm. And so he feels, you know, we need to start going like 50 50 on the, I'm not going right. to pay for everything. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not here to impress you anymore. We're a couple, yeah. you know, and um, what's more, I know how much you earn and you earn a lot more than me. So I think, I think it's one of those, yeah. um, pivotal moments in a relationship when you're not you're not dating anymore you're mm -hmm. becoming a couple and and therefore certain roles within that relationship yeah. are changing and you're and you're coming to a point where where you're actually more more on the level and, and this is where oslin then takes that kind of in a microcosm and expands it out to the yacht and suddenly Absolutely. you've got you know, eight different couples with the same habits. They, they, they're not evil people. They're not ugly people. They're not, you know, but they're so used to getting what they want and everyone around them's life is supposed to be devoted to them getting what they want. When, when, when the tables are finally turned, it's, it's quite cathartic. <laughs> Oh yeah, I mean, the, I think the the sequence where we we are first transported onto the yacht and you see the various tiers of class system introduced, yeah. I think, are brilliant. And the fact that there are even tiers within uh, the the domestic staff, within the ship's yes. crew, you know, from yes. the captain all the way down to mm -hmm. poor Abigail Dolly De Leon's character, who is like, you know, she, she's the head of the cleaning staff essentially. Right, she's but. But there's um there's that sequence where Paula is trying to um hype up the uh, the what would you call them the hospitality crew right, you know, right. the 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 waiters and the waitresses the the right. the customer facing crew and they're all in it they're like money 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 you know we're gonna get rich we're gonna get rich we're gonna get tips we're gonna get you know we've just got to be on our on our best game put the game face on all the yeah. time uh, obviously the captain doesn't have to do that. Uh, Abigail and and the domestic staff don't have to they they just have to not be seen at all, right, you know. Right. And and so there are these fascinating sort of tears within it. And then of course, yes, when when the ship uh, well doesn't sink, it blows up. Um, yeah. They you know the tables are completely turned because these <laughs> these people have obviously uh, they want for nothing and they've just been able to yeah. throw money at any problem. They're finally in a situation where they realize they don't know how to fish. They don't know how to start a fire. They don't know how yeah. to survive. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's uh, sort of like, I love the irony of the old couple that made their fortune on munitions and, and they, they oh, die by hand grenade and they die by, by their own hand grenade. <laughs> Quite literally. Yeah. No, nice that's, a, that's a, that was, that was like a really, a really sort of funny little, uh, little moment. Um, and nice to see sort of Woody Harrelson in yeah, here in yeah. here as well because i wasn't sure coming into this movie because obviously um ruben osland is is swedish and his films while international in flavor have all been sort of predominantly in swedish i wasn't sure what language this movie was going to be in until i mm -hmm. kind of sat down and started. i was like i know harris dickinson is an english actor but other than him and woody harrelson i wasn't quite sure of of the cast i wasn't really familiar with with any of the other performers and so uh I was quite surprised when you know the vast majority of this movie actually is in is in English. Yeah, yeah. Which um which I think has probably helped it cross over into a sort of academy voters uh the forefront of of their minds, you know, and, and yeah. helped it earn the best picture nomination yeah. as opposed to just like let's say for example yeah. an international film nom nomination. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't love a story of the takedown of the rich? I mean, you basically sure. you 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 spend 30 minutes just showing the exuberance and the gall of of these you know high fluting folk to the point where the one lady has everybody on the ship that's on the staff take a swim in the ocean because yeah. she thinks it's for their own good even though you know it's just it gets so absurd at times and yet you know obviously he's building up this this crescendo of opulence to the point where and entitlement the, and entitlement yes um to the point where they're on the beach, which to me by far even better than the vomiting is the best scene in the film is when, when Dolly De Leon just turns the tables on them. And when she basically, you know, I caught the fish, I built the fire, I, I made the fire, 
you know, you don't understand. No, no, no. You understand. You're the cleaning person. You work for us. No, here I'm captain. And when yeah. she starts offering food in exchange for them calling her captain, I was like, oh, okay, this just went up a star in my oh yeah in my review. And she's made that incredible. Is it octopus salad or something? Yeah. And you just go, ah, oh, you know, it looks and so then she's good. Just, and she's just tossing it out to anybody yeah. who will break down and call her. Now I'm the boss. Now I'm the boss. Tables are turned. Yeah. And then she, you know, she uses it. It goes so far where she ends up using sort of Carl as a sex toy and, and yeah. all that. She just takes him. And I mean, to be honest, that's the, that's the sequence. That, I mean, that's a great sequence. But for me, it was that third act that ended up kind of running a little long for me because I think it might have worked better as a bit more of a almost as a punch punch line but it yeah. go, but it goes on for like a good sort of half an hour or so and you're like okay I get it yeah, uh, yeah. and it's more just about a pattern of behavior that, that that perpetuates rather than anything new really being brought to the situation and that's what I'm both disappointed and yet I understand what Oslin's trying to communicate here one I'm disappointed because when the, the lower class rises to the upper class. You're thinking, oh, great. Things are going to change now. And they don't. Old boss, same, you know, new boss, same as old boss. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, in my my interpretation of this, Austin is trying to say it doesn't matter. Poor and disenfranchised people, when they come into those same places of power, they're going to use others for their own benefit as well. It's something in human nature rather than... Mm -hmm. Was it power? Power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. You know, right? Uh, every, anybody who, uh, given the opportunity, will do the exact same thing. And as justification, yeah. they'll say, "Well, it happened to me." You know, yeah. it, it's like what yeah, it's like bullying, bullying in schools yeah. and things like that. You know, any kind of any kind of exploitation in in a hierarchy is always the same. You know, the young kids get bullied, and then when they become the older kids, they bully the young kids because because I had to go through it. That's you know, that will That's that will it. always be the justification for it. And and here it's the exact same thing. And you know what? It's it's not the most profound message in the no. world, no. you know, and I think that that's one of the things that ultimately kind of bothers me about the film is the is the fact that it's it, it's, it's very long. Mm -hmm. And although every individual each each of the three acts, if you like, is observed and played out incredibly well, I think it um it overstates each each of these points yes. until yeah. by the end it's you know you're left kind of it's kind of bloated and it's one it's one point it's one joke that you're making and it's it's belabored i think yes. by the end yeah. so after was it two and it's oh it's about two and a half hours long isn't it it's it's yeah. it's, it's a fair bit yeah it's a fair bit i mean and and the whole uh dolly delon segment at the end like you said that runs its course for so long there's nothing new i mean once it's established that she's using Carl for her own gain and it, nothing really new develops. They just kind of keep playing out the same situation for an extra 15 minutes. Yeah. I mean, and it's a shame because the, the, when it's, when it's hitting, uh, you know, on, on, on firing on all cylinders, it really is. I mean, the whole opening, the skewering of the fashion industry, you know, there's a whole, yes. situ the whole joke about getting the, uh, the models to smile or to frown, yeah. depending on how expensive the brand it is that they're um, right. That they're working for. And all of that, you can, you just know without knowing, you know, that that's spot on satire yeah. of, of the fashion yeah. world uh and as i've as i've said some of the observations about the uh the couple are great yeah. and then um just the entitlement and opulence and arrogance and um ignorance of yeah. these of these ri ridiculously wealthy people on the boat is played out um you know incredibly well as well as the sort of the predatory nature of the crew yes we are there to serve but we're not you know it's yeah. all it's all a it's all face it's yeah. all a facade you know yeah. we are there to prey on you as best we can as kind of leeches on people with too much money to know what to do with yeah you know i love the moment where the the old russian woman goes can you clean the sails please <laughs> yeah and there aren't any sails <laughs> But and then how the different characters respond to that, and so and so, yeah, you know, it's it's too much of a good thing, and I think yeah, ultimately yeah. by the end it, it dilutes the message, and you get tired of it before before it's over. Yeah, it could have been a great ninety-minute movie with three acts of thirty minutes a piece, and it would have been tight, and it would have communicated the same message without the bloat.
I, I, I do like the cast. Uh, as I said, I thought Harris Dickinson is great. I think we're going to see great things. I think he's been, you know, I've seen him in a few things like the King, King's yeah. Man and things like that. I think we're going to see great things from him. Um, so I do want to give a shout out to Charlby Dean, who's the, the actress who plays Yaya, who sadly died shortly after the um, the, the film premiered, the film came out, um, because it's a great performance. And I think we would have probably have seen a lot more of her. And, you know, it's, it's a kind of a career launching performance, really. Mm-hmm. Um and sadly, she's not going to be around to benefit from that. And obviously, Dolly De Leon. There was a lot. There was a an active campaign to get a, an Oscar nomination for Dolly De Leon, which would have been a first for a Filipina actress. Uh, sadly, that didn't uh, come about. But I think uh, enough noise was made that I think uh, people are now aware. Certainly, we are aware of who she is and. Uh, she's on our radar and I think we're going to yeah. see see maybe even if it's only back in the Philippines I think we're going to see her get some more prominent roles in sort of internationally uh, facing yeah. Yes. pictures yeah yeah it's definitely her name is the name that's been coming out of this film as the kind of the breakout performance and 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 well deserved absolutely well James if we draw to a close we're going to need an instrument of measurement how are we going to grade the triangle of sadness how many triangles be... of sadness? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I think hand grenades. Uh, hand grenades. Yes, yeah. How I many... can't remember the name of the family brand, unfortunately, but yeah, they're now on the bottom of the ocean, so it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so for me, I have um, I have cooled on this movie slightly since I first mm-hmm. saw it. I remember coming out of the screening uh, in Busan back in last October. And thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Yes, I already recognized that it was um, it was long and unwieldy and unsubtle in its execution, uh, but really, really entertaining, really, really enjoyed it. Since then, however, um, I focused a little more on the negatives and less on the positives. So I think my um, my grade has has come down a little bit, but I still think it's worth definitely worth seeking out because the good stuff in it is is really really good, good. and yeah. it's really yeah. funny and i think be- because of the best picture nomination uh you're going to uh it's going to attract a bigger audience and if that leads more people to the work of ruben ostland the square force majeure and other films then that is a good thing so i'm going to give it a a, a very seaworthy if unremarkable three grenades out of five. James, I love what Oslin's done with kind of just subverting expectations, societal norms. I, at the beginning with the whole modeling situation and, and when he's forced to kind of walk back and forth, too, even when they make reference to the triangle of sadness, try to get rid of the triangle of sadness. There, there's such almost a Zoolander aspect. Oslin's just taking such the mickey out of this whole industry. And it's one that I've always struggled with for years. The whole fashion industry, if there's an industry that I just totally don't get, it just seems beyond reality. Like humanity would be much better off without it. Um, it's this. So I love the pot shots of it because it, in my mind, it's so ridiculous. And then from then on, he just skewers different elements in society that I can stand up and say, yeah, it's good to skewer that group. But like yourself, uh, it was too unwieldy. It was too long. There was aspects of it that I found I was disappointed in. And so I will say the other way that you suggested and that you kind of focused a bit and you've kind of cooled. I think I originally on Letterboxd had given this two and a half. But as I've reappraised this talking with you, I'm going to up it to a solid three as well, because I think people need to see this film. Like you said, the sections that are done well are done remarkably well and um i'll leave it at that go see it it's fantastic Mostly. i think the film <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think the film that it surprisingly has quite a strong connection with is the menu uh you uh, know yes, they're, yes. they're both targeting yeah. a very very similar group and both result with the the ultimate um both result in, in sort of the antagonist to that community in both cases yeah. just seeking solace in in a simple cheeseburger, yes. And I thought yeah. it was a nice it was a nice little way of sort of tying those two movies together because they're both skewering the exact same group, and both of them hone in, you know, from very different angles, but both hone in just on the the simple uh, no frills uh, hominess of a good solid cheeseburger. 
I'm glad you made that connection because I think we talked about this previously when we were referring to these films and I'm such a fan of the menu. The menu is one of my top 10 films of 2022. Um, I think it does a slightly better job than triangle of sadness, but, uh, and I, I just want to add with, cause we never reviewed the menu is mm. I rewatched it last week with friends upstairs and we were so enamored with that cheeseburger at the end that we made the oh. homemade smash. We try to get it as close to Ralph finds cheeseburgers. We can, and I will insert picture of said cheeseburgers here. <laughs> now I'm hungry. Yeah. Well, that's James and I's thought on the Triangle of Sadness. What are your thoughts? We'd love to start a conversation with you. Feel free to leave a comment in the comment boxes below. Also, James and I are on social media. You might want to find us on Twitter as well as Instagram. And again, like the comments, you'll find links in the boxes below. James? That's right. Have you seen any other Ruben Ostlund movies? I'm sure you have. Which are your favorites? Uh, let us know in the comments. And how does this rank amongst the likes of Force Majeure and The Square? The Until next episode. Bye bye. You're wonderful to see. You are to be in pictures. Oh, what a hit you would be. 